Hey, what's going on guys? I wanted to do a walkthrough on how to set up a development environment in Sublime Text 3. I've already done a video on setting up a dev environment in Sublime Text 2, but a lot of people are switching over to 3 and a few of those steps in the process are different. So I wanted to make a separate video for this as well. Um, so I'll show you how to get it installed, how to get package control working, how to install a few packages, show a few packages that I like, and also how to change around a few settings and things like that. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm over here at the Sublime Text website, that is sublimetext.com. If we come down here to this download link, this is a download link for Sublime Text 2, um, but they have a link here for Sublime Text 3 in beta. So let's go ahead and just click on that and then choose the operating system that you have and go ahead and download it. And now once that's finished downloading, we'll go ahead and install it. And I'm going to drag this over to my Applications folder. And I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Okay, now, first thing I'm going to do here is drag in a sample project that I have. Uh, that way we just have some files to work with. Um, this project has a sample HTML file a CSS file, and a JavaScript file. Okay, and let me make this text a little bit bigger so that you guys can see. Now the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is install package control. If we go over here to Google, um, you can Google this, uh, Sublime Text Package Control, and it's one of the first links at the top. So just click on that, then you'll see a link over here that says install now. And we wanna to go to where it says Sublime Text 3. You have two options for Sublime Text 2 and 3. Let's be sure that we're on the 3 tab and highlight all this code here and copy that. And then open up Sublime and in our top menu here, go to View, Show Console and then paste the code that we got from that website into the console and hit Enter and wait for that to finish. And once that finishes, we'll have to be sure to restart Sublime Text. So I'm gonna go ahead and restart. Okay, and to test if that worked, let's hit Command Shift P and then type install. And if we see this command here, package control install package, that means that we successfully installed package control. Um, so let's go ahead and install package here. Uh, just to get started with, we'll do some color schemes. Um, there are some color schemes that I like uh, by this guy here, Dale Reese color schemes. There's a lot to choose from. So go ahead and install that and you'll see in the bottom left, it'll say installing package. And whenever this finishes, it will let you know. Okay, and now that that package is finished, we can go up here to Sublime Text, Preferences, Color Scheme, and then we can see all these color schemes here that we have to choose from. Um, so the color schemes are nice just for um, changing around, changing up the color of your code. Um, but there's also entire themes that you can download that will not only change the color, but it'll change the entire layout and look of the application. So it'll change these folder icons over here. It'll change the way that your tabs look up at the top. So let's go ahead and install one of those. Um, so again, hit Command Shift P, type install. And the theme I use is called Predon. And now whenever this package finishes, you'll see that it pops up with this readme file. Uh, sometimes whenever you install a package that has a couple of steps that you need to go through in order to get the package to work, it'll come with a readme file uh, to walk you through those steps. Um, so uh, like for example here, he says to activate the theme, um, add or replace your current theme settings with the code below. So we can just highlight this code, copy that, go up here to Sublime Text, Preferences, and Settings User. We don't want to go to Settings Default because Settings Default is the default settings for Sublime Text. And if we change anything in there, if there's ever an update to the program, then those could be overwritten. So your safest bet is to always make sure that you make your custom changes to the Settings User file. So now that we're in here, let's go ahead and highlight all this and erase that and paste in the code that he gave us for the theme. And whenever we save, we'll see those changes take effect. Okay, now we can see that the theme changed the entire look of the application. The tabs look different. 
folders look different. If we go back to the README file, uh, he has some other settings that he suggests adding in. And these are settings that I like as well, so I'm going to go ahead and copy these. And if we go to our user settings and put these within these brackets here, and we're going to have to put a comma here and paste those in and save. Okay, and now you can see that the, uh, the tabs still look a little funny here and uh, some of this text doesn't quite look right over here. It's because if we go to the back to the readme file, uh, he has an important tag here that says, make sure that you restart Sublime after installing uh, to make sure that the activation uh, was successful. So let's go ahead and restart Sublime and bring it back up. Okay, and now we can see that these tabs look right and uh, all this text is fixed over here. So now I'm going to blow this text up a little bit so that you can see it better. And so now we have uh, some ways to customize the application. We can customize the colors or change the entire theme if we want. But now let's try to install a few packages that will hopefully uh, help you with your workflow. Um, so the first one I'd like to show you is one called Bracket Highlighter. So if we hit Command-Shift-P and type install. And then type in Bracket Highlighter and install that. Now what this does is we're on our JavaScript file right now. If we go to, um, you just click on any of the brackets here and it'll tell you where over here in the gutter, it'll show you where that bracket starts and where that bracket ends. It's really, <clears throat> it's really useful for uh, longer functions whenever you don't know or, or whenever you have nested functions. And, um, and sometimes these beginning and ending brackets can be hard to see. It also works in your CSS files. Um, so you can see over here in the gutter, it shows where these brackets begin and end. And it also works in your HTML files. Um, if, uh, if you click within a div here, it'll show you where this tag begins and where this tag ends. Um, so it's a useful little plugin for, um, you know, just a quick reference. Next package I'd like to show you is one called Sidebar Enhancements. And I didn't show this in my Sublime Text 2 video uh, because it's no longer supported in Sublime Text 2. So um, now it's only on Sublime Text 3. Um, but uh, by default, if we right click over here in our application folders or any of these folders, you'll see that our options are pretty limited. We only have a total of six here right now. Um, so let's go ahead and install the sidebar enhancements. So that's Command Shift P, install, and this one's called sidebar enhancements. Go ahead and install that. And now you'll now that that's installed, you'll see if we right click over here, uh, we have a lot more options. And in my opinion, these uh, are a lot more useful than the six that we had before. Um, so now moving on, let's install one called Sublime Code Intel. And what Sublime Code Intel does is it kind of adds some like some IDE style functionality to Sublime Text. It'll add in some code completion and things like that. Um, so let's hit Command Shift P, type install. And this one is called Sublime Code Intel. And this one can take a second to install. Okay, when that's finished installing, it'll pop up with this readme file here. And this just kind of gives um, some information about the package, uh, what languages it supports. Um, it also comes with a few shortcuts that you can use in your application. So let me go ahead and show you what this does. So in my JavaScript file here, um, I have this test string variable right here. If I come down a couple of lines and do test string dot, and whenever I hit the dot, it'll come up with all these different methods that I can use. And, uh, you know, uh, code completion is always useful. Um, uh, just, you know, uh, sometimes you have trouble remembering these off the top of your head. So it's uh, just nice to have those little hints from time to time. Okay, the next package I'd like to show you is one called Emmet. Uh, Command Shift P, install, package, and this one is called Emmet. Okay, now when this finishes installing, it'll pop up with a readme file as well. Um, so let me show you what Emmet does. I, now, I'm not the best with Emmet, um, but basically what it is, it's, it's a way to uh, quickly uh, scaffold out large chunks of code uh, just using a little bit of text. So in my HTML file here, for example, if I want 
three divs, I can say div times three and hit tab and it'll come out with those three divs. Uh, if I wanted uh, three divs with, or say I wanted six divs with uh, the class my class, then I could do div dot my class times six, hit tab, and it fills it all in for you. Um, there's tons of tutorials online. I'm not going to go into Emmet in depth, but uh, some people are really good with this. I'm not that great, but even if you just learn a little bit, it really does uh, boost how fast you can scaffold out your code. Um, so it's very useful once you get the hang of it. Okay, the last package I'm going to show you has changed pretty drastically from Sublime Text 2 to Sublime Text 3, and that is the Sublime Linter. In Sublime Text 2, all you had to do was install the Sublime Linter package, and it came with all these languages, and what it would do is it would, uh, any time that you use those languages, it would um, do content checks and give you warnings and errors uh, whenever you made mistakes in your code, uh, and it's very useful in Sublime Text 3. Uh, I think it works even better, but the downside is that it's a little bit harder to install and you have to install each language individually. Um, so let me go ahead and walk through and show you how to get this installed. Um, before you install this, uh, you will need to have Node.js installed, and that's over here at nodejs.org slash download. I already have it installed on my machine, so I'm not going to do that again. Um, but whenever you download it, it will install install the node package manager for you and <clears throat> you'll need that in order to s install some of the uh, languages that uh, you can get with this linter. Um, so let's go ahead and install this. So uh, as usual hit command shift P and then type in install and this is called sublime linter. Now you want to be careful because there's one here called sublime lint and that's not the right one. The main one is called Sublime Linter, Interactive Code Linting Framework for Sublime Text 3. So let's go ahead and install that. Now the difference in Sublime Text 3 is once that's installed, it doesn't actually do anything by itself. We have to install each language separately. Um, so there's a bunch of different languages to choose from, but just uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do JS Hint, which is a popular JavaScript linting uh, library and uh, CSS lint for CSS. Um, so if I go over here to my browser and I type in sublime linter JS hint, then the top link here is to their GitHub page and we can see how to install this. Pretty much all you need to do is down here where it says install JS hint by typing this into the terminal. You can copy this code and you can open up your terminal and paste that in to install JS Hint. And if you get an error, you may need to do a sudo before the command. Okay, now once that's complete, let's go ahead and pull up Sublime Text. And now we're going to install the Sublime Linter JS Hint package. So Command Shift P and install and then type in sublime linter and dash and anything with the sublime linter dash and then these languages after it. These are ones that are uh, actually supported by the sublime linter framework and you can also check to make sure if it's, um, if it's official if by the GitHub link because the GitHub link will always be github.com slash sublime linter slash and language. So we want to find JS hint and that's this one right here. So let's go ahead and install that. And once that's installed, we're going to want to go ahead and restart Sublime. So let's take that down and bring it back up. And now let's go over to our JavaScript file and see if that worked. So uh, say that you're doing some coding and you leave out a semicolon. It'll pop up here with a warning on the side. Or if you misspell a word, It'll pop up with a bunch of warnings here, and whenever you click on any of these warnings, uh, in the bottom left is where it tells you what it thinks the problem is. And right here it says missing a semicolon. Um, you know, down here um, it's, you know, function is not defined, or F-U-C-T-I-O-N is not defined. So you can see that you spelled something wrong. Um, so it's really useful to, uh, to have these code warnings and code errors uh, displayed to you as you're going along. Um, and, you know, it really cuts down on mistakes.
Now really fast I'll show you how to install one more of these Sublime Linear languages that way you can kind of get the hang of it and then install uh, more on your own. Um, so now I'm going to show you how to do the one for CSS. Uh, if we go over here to the CSS now um, you can see if we take out these semicolons it's not giving us any warnings on the side here that anything's wrong with this code. Um, so if we go back to Google and instead of searching for JS Hint, we search for CSS Lint and click on the top link here. Then it's pretty much the same thing. We just want to do npm install global CSS Lint. Go back to terminal. I'm going to do a sudo install. And once that finishes, we can open up Sublime and actually install that linter package. Uh, so let's hit Command Shift P, type install, and that one is called Sublime Linter CSS Lint. Go ahead and install that. And once that's finished, uh, to be safe, let's go ahead and restart Sublime again. And now you can see whenever we uh, delete this semicolon or make any mistakes, it will um, give us a few warnings and some errors here if we click on the warning. Uh, in the bottom left, it'll tell us that it was expecting a semicolon, um, but it didn't find one. Um, so it's always nice to have those things uh, watching in the background as you're doing coding because everybody makes, um, you know, silly mistakes here and there. And it's nice to have something that pops up and says, um, says hey, uh, this is wrong or you uh, have a warning in this area. So that's the last package I wanted to show you guys. Um, if you want to come in uh, to Sublime Text and start uh, playing around with different packages, uh, if you ever want to remove a package, it's really easy. Uh, if you hit Command Shift P, instead of typing install, you just type remove and then choose the option here for package control remove package and then click that and it'll show you all the packages that you have installed. Um, and then you can just come in here and uh, remove any one that you want. So I think that, that about does it. You guys have a way to customize the application um, uh, and hopefully these packages will help you out with your workflow. Um, if you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to ask in the comment section. Uh, be sure to subscribe for future videos and uh, hopefully this was useful for you guys and thanks for watching.